What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fath, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are here for the pre-Thanksgiving slate, the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Hope you guys are all having a great time. This is, uh, for those of you who don't haven't followed us for a while, this is usually my my best uh, time. I usually have a really good Wednesday. I've won the tournament, the big one, three times. I've come in the top 10, like, basically every year. Um, and then I, I tend to have a really good uh, Thursday session and then a good Sunday. So hopefully this will be good DFS-wise, not just family and fun-wise, because uh, this would certainly be a fun one. And this is, it's going to be a crazy slate. We're going to get a ton of news later today. Um, it's a monstrous slate. So just don't feel like there's anything you absolutely have to do, I guess, is my first piece of advice. And we're going to do our best knowing full well that we will get information about players being ruled out later. Sheets, how are you doing today? Uh, good. Ready to, ready to, ready to play for second. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm just, I'm not saying that it happens. I, I you know, I, I, I'd like to call my shot though. Cause I, I'd be nice to get that big win. I've had, I've had some decent wins, yeah. in NBA, but not, not a big win this year so far. Six figures. All right, here we go. Uh, let's pull up your screen and we'll go game by game here. Yeah, I think that's the, I think that's, I'm glad we're doing this today. I'm sorry about yesterday that I had to, uh, to miss live because I just couldn't make it back in time. But this is a, this is a, I mean, this is going to be a, as of right now, it would be an incredibly tough slate and it's probably going to be tough, but I think we're going to have some really obvious value later on. Well, forget early on, later on. How about, how about right off the bat? Um, yeah. Well, so that's the problem. Okay. Um, so, so you, so I don't know if you were around. Yeah. Oh, you were around to see it. So at the, at the, with like 20 minutes to post last night, they announced that, that Harold was going to be starting. Um, right. Unfortunately, and, I saw yeah, that. <laughs> and right me too um and he ended up um you know getting a lot of i don't know how much ownership he actually ended up getting but i played a whole bunch of him and he was off to a really really good start and then just he got i don't know what happened but uh but paul reed was the hero um coming off the bench at 10 percent ownership to to smash um really smash, yeah yeah and, and you know you, shake milton didn't didn't hurt anybody because everybody had him you know what I mean? Um, not a big deal either way. But you know, we're, we're right. We're right back after it. Uh, I don't know what I want to do yet with this. With these. With these Phillies. Like I know that Shake Milton's going to be a good play again. I don't know exactly what to do with the uh, with the centers and and let me tell you something. You know, I, I uh, how, how many times in the last what four years? However, that however long I've been doing this. Does Tobias Harris like bust when Embiid and everybody else is out? I oh, mean, it's, a, God, it's almost every time. Almost every time. Right. Um, so I, uh, someone else can play him. Uh, as far as Charlotte goes, um, I don't see anything right now. Um, what do you what, what What are you going to do in this game? Um. Hmm. That's a really uh, this is a really tough one. So I, I I have my priorities written out before the show, and my priority just says Philly. <laughs> it doesn't. I don't. I don't have. I don't haven't expanded on it much. You know what I mean? I think right. Milton is the obvious one. I think that you mix in Paul Reed and Harrell. I actually think that after Paul Reed played a bunch, I, th I think that Harrell is firmly in play against his former team here. Um, this is a great matchup for the bigs too. And and like I said yesterday, I, I wish I was on air. I did I did put it in my bets of the day. I I mean it's it's when Philly was getting eight points at home. I don't care who they have on their on their team against Brooklyn. I'm like I said that's the most ridiculous spread I've ever seen. And of course they beat Brooklyn handily. And Brooklyn didn't even play poor, particularly badly. They just scored like the I will on on them. So I think you're looking at Paul Reed and Milton. I'm sorry as Harold and Milton as as the best plays early on. But it's it certainly mixing in some Paul Reed makes some sense. And I think that even if you're playing like enough lineups, Melton and Melton has a ceiling. I, I would say more than Harris does, but Harris's low ownership tonight is just kind of appealing. But overall, I think that, I think that's how I have it ranked. Milton number one, Harold number two, Reed number three, and and I have Reed and Harold slashed next to each other. Um and then uh then I think you mix in you mix in a little bit of Melton because I, I he's got a ceiling. The problem is he has to stay hot, but he, you know, he put up what he put up forty eight last night. Um, I don't mind that. So that that's where I'm at so far with that. And and on the other side, I just I feel like it's the same thing. There's all these guys you could play and on well, all this stuff. And I don't know. For me, the guy who who stands out the most, and I always say this, and I never end up playing him because he always ends up looking bad by the end of the slate, is PJ Washington. 
who has a massive ceiling. Um, he just put a 56 the other night. Uh, it's against a front line that doesn't really exactly exist. I think PJ Washington's mildly interesting, but I don't really want to play any of these guys, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, all right. You want to start off the next one? Yeah, so I presume you got to pause the first set. Sorry. No problem. Hey, I'm up. All right, so we're about to talk about Portland and, and Cleveland. So what, what do you got here, Sheets? Um, I have um, Lillard still out. So I think similarly, Simons is going to just for some reason not project well. What what is going on with these projections for Simons? I can't figure and be it a, out. And be, a good, and be a good play again, you know. Yep. So I'm not going to argue. I'm just going to throw it in there. Um, the guys who are showing up are, are I mean, Shel Shade and Sharp, and boy, oh boy, I didn't even notice this year Little was still on the team. Um, but they're not really showing up as great plays or anything. They're just showing up as kind of like random point per dollar plays. But I don't know why I, why I get too fancy. I just go play. Play Simons when Lillard is out. I mean, he, he should be over eight K. Um, yeah, I, I imagine. I get. Oh, I I see what it is. Oh, oh, well, you know what? Hard is probable. It's not like he's out. I wonder why these the Sear Littles and these guys are getting anything at all. Um, anyway, uh, Simon seems like a reasonable play. Nurkic, I mean, tell me you're gonna get thirty two minutes. I mean, I'll I'll take a shot. But him too, he's not projecting well either. I don't know. They don't like Portland for some reason. Um, on the Cleveland side, uh, boy, I mean, why why are all these other games like so much better than this game? I don't know. I'm, I'm seeing nothing from from Cleveland either. It's weird. I mean, do, do are you getting to more of these guys than I am? I'm definitely getting to one of Simons or Nurk. <laughs> that's, right. that's for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, 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 and the worry we have with Nurk is we talked about how Portland likes to go small sometimes. They don't have that option in this game. You've got two okay. guys who are 6'11 plus who are big on the other side. You could argue they're taller than that even. They, but the thing is, they both, neither of them, I, I guess they, they they wouldn't put Mobley probably on Nurkic because he's more of a versatile defender. But Jared Allen, as good a defender as he is, he's not like a good, like he's, it's not like you, can, you can't beat him up one-on-one. -on -one. And Nurkic is just as strong as anybody not named Valanciunas in the league and, and Steven Adams. So I actually like this matchup a lot for Nurkic, even though it's weird because they're really, it's a really good defensive team. But if they stay in this game, you better believe it's going to be because of Simons or Nurkic. The shade and sharp thing feels wrong to do on this size slate, but if there's no value that opens up later, he's a guy I'm comfortable taking shots on because he's just super talented. Um, he's going to have a wide range of outcomes, probably not going to end up getting there, but on a smaller slate, on a slate like yesterday, I think we would have played a lot of shade and sharp here. I don't think we're going to today. Um, it's not the kind of matchup for Josh Hart where you usually want to see, not for Jeremy, Jeremy Grant. All these other pieces, I, I'm sort of surprised, like with you, that they're projecting for really anything. To be to be honest with you, um, I, I don't have, I don't see the need to go to all this. Um, yeah, and and, and I, on the on the port on the Cleveland side, Donovan Mitchell is a great play every night. Um, he's going to get, you know, he's he's getting 50s as much as he's getting 40s, and. That's pretty much my the end of my love for for Cleveland is is Donovan Mitchell just in the uh, potential chance that he puts up one of his other fifty five games at ninety two hundred I think we'd certainly be happy about that. So uh, Mitchell is a is not a priority, but he's a guy I'm considering. And Simons and Nur and Nurk one of Simons or Nurkic will be a priority for me as of right now. All right, uh, you got Minnesota Indiana right? Yeah. Um, Go ahead. I got um I got the two bigs from Minnesota being reasonable. Um, Towns at nine k, and Gobert at sixty five hundred. Um, on the Indiana side, it seems a uh, seems a little frothy. Uh, to play Halliburton at ninety five hundred. Um, on a big big old slate. Uh, I know it's a matchup we sometimes like to play, but. I don't, I don't know if I could do it. I mean, if I get to it in like MME, I'll play it, but I don't think I could play him in a big one or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, because of the way they play and the speed of, of this game should be, it's really hard for me to just ignore it. Um, uh, we know Anthony Edwards has a ridiculous ceiling. And by the way, he's been consistent lately in terms of his fantasy production. He's put up 40 and over four out of the last five, which just not like him to do, including a 63 in there. 
this is a good matchup for him. Um, I, 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 you know, I wish that uh, D'Angelo Russell was any good at basketball because he's going to occasionally put up monster scores and he's 6K, but I don't think I can get to him here. Jaden McDaniels, I don't think I can get to, even though, you know, on a small slate, sure. I think Towns, if you want to play for ceilings, one of Towns or Edwards certainly makes a lot of sense to me. And Halliburton on the other side always makes sense to me. Um, I just think that, you know, look, we, we look at it every night. Halliburton missed his fourth quarter rotation in the last game because they were up by too many points. Only played 27 minutes, put up 42, 59 in the game before that. He basically puts up 40s and 50s every night. I know he's a little bit more expensive now, but it's hard not to have him on the list. Um, I think he and Mitchell rate to be sort of similar plays for me, but I like this game environment better. So I'm interested in maybe a Towns v. Halliburton or Edwards versus Halliburton. I'd like to get to some other things. This is a really rare spot where you have both teams that play two sort of bigs. You know what I mean? Turner and Smith on on the other side. Um, I just am not quite getting to 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 the to Maybe I should get to a little buddy healed and, and, and Jalen Smith. I think that that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I've got here. It's too big of a slate to take a shot. If Isaiah Jackson's out, he's questionable. I would give a pretty big bump to Jalen Smith because Jalen Smith is a guy who can, you know, he can, he, he goes out there consistently and you, you know, when, when he doesn't get his minutes cut, he's like the last time he played 30 minutes, he puts up 47 the problem is he gets he ends up losing minutes to another good player in, in in Jackson, but if if so I have I have him just as a possibility right now. But Halliburton, Towns, and Edwards is my priority. I do think this is a game that that I could see potentially stacking if anybody gets announced out or anything happens later today because it's it's a really good game environment. It's just not nobody you're not getting a crazy discount on anybody. Although you I guess you could argue that maybe Cat is a little too cheap. So that's where I'm at on this one. All right. Uh, next up, what do you have? I have Dallas Boston. Um, Dallas Boston, Ugh. and I don't really, have, I don't really have anything. Um, uh, you know, Luca twelve eight against Boston is not gonna, not gonna happen for me. Um, uh, the only thing I would note is that Dinwiddie is questionable, um, and if he doesn't play, I don't know, maybe you get a bump out of heart to Hardaway or something like that. Um, but that's that's speculation right now. Um, I think he dislocated his shoulder, though. I, I can't imagine him playing. Um, yeah. So he yeah. come leading into Thanksgiving and whatever. Um, just uh, so so bad that 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 could be something that opens up a little bit. But that's a that's pretty that's pretty thin. I think um, I don't know. Uh, yep. So for me, th this game is probably kind of a toss up. Yeah, it's not it's not a fun one to try to attack. Uh, sure, if Dinwiddie's out, taking a shot on Hardaway, but you've got to see it as a shot. You can't see it as like, oh, I'm going to get Hardaway. And people will look at the game log and go, oh my God, but he took 26 shots the other night. Well, that was no Luka game. Um, it's it, at 4,300. I think, I think you're right. I think this is probably just a stay away. Um, I, I, you know, as, as I always, as every night, one of Tatum or Brown is probably going to put up 50 ish. Um, but it's not the kind of matchup I really want to attack, to be honest with you. So I'm, I'm sort of just like man, I, I, DFS plays a lot of minutes. He's 3,800. We don't need that. I don't think we're going to need that value by the end of the day. You have Marcus smart at 50 at, at 59, which is reasonable. I just think that it's, it's a better pass than anything else. If there was one guy I had to play, it would be Jalen Brown. Um, But I don't like trying to attack Dallas who plays slow. This is just, just feels like we could do better. All right. Um, next up, you've got the uh, Washington, Minnesota, Miami, right? <laughs> yeah, the Miami, the Miami shit show continues. Um, yeah. Why don't you throw out what you think about this one? Because we've got so many guys who are le like legit questionable here. Well, unfortunately, I have to analyze this like I did. I the last time they played when you were, you know, when I did it solo, is that it's just kind of silly to to analyze it now. You know, I just I just don't know who's playing. Um, we know Strust Str Str is just get announced out, by the way, for what that for what it's worth. Well, I mean, so that's something. But if you know, so if Hero plays, you know, he's probably going to be a good play. I'll tell you this: freaking Lowry like never gets hurt. The guy just, just keeps playing. Plays, he plays a million a, minutes. Plays a million minutes. Um, even a oh, high Smith is probable. Um, so yeah, if, if Hero plays, I'm sure he's a good play. I'm, I'm sure that. That regardless, Lowry's probably going to be decent play. Um, we just have to see. I mean, I just kind of so to speculate. 
And likewise, on the Washington side, you have Bradley Beal, who's semi-questionable. He participated in the shoot-around, so that's something, but we just have to see. I mean, like, I don't really like anything on Washington if Washington, if they all play, but if he's out, then, you know, we'll have to run stuff and see see who pops. So, um, you know, we'll just we'll, – we'll, 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 we'll be there live, and hopefully we'll get, we'll get news in, t- in time to react. But those are the things I'm looking at is who plays for Miami and whether Beal plays for Washington. Yeah, as gross as this sounds, the only guy I really have in this on the Washington side is Avdia, and it's only because he's he's basically just been getting there all the time. But it's not like in a play I really want to make. Um, I think that I go, I would go Bam Lowry Hero, assuming they all play. Uh, actually, maybe Bam Hero Lowry, um, as long as as long as there's no restrictions on Hero. That is, um, it is his ankle, so you might see him a little bit limited. But if he if he's out again, I would go. I would definitely prioritize one of Bam or Lowry, if not both. It's a good pace game. They've got these guys have gotten there every game. Like that we that we haven't seen the the Butler and Hero thing. So if Hero's out. Let's go there. Gabe Vincent is, you know, we'll see if he plays. Um, I, I am still on the, on board with the, the, they don't like playing Jovic all these minutes uh, and they had to do it in a couple games. I don't think I want to go there at 4,100 here, but I'm, it's not the worst thing. I think I would probably rather take a longer shot on Highsmith than I would on, on him. Uh, and, and uh, that's, I mean, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to see, like you said, we, we don't, we know with no stress that's going to give a bump to some people, but I don't, I don't really know what to do with it. Cause he does shoot the ball a ton. He's not necessarily like the high usage in terms of like bringing it up, but he shoots it a ton. So I'm sort of surprised that Miami isn't projecting a little better without him. Um, I guess we'll just have to see what happens with the Gabe Vincent, Tyler hero and Dwayne Dedman plays. Cause those three are all, I think, legit questionable. So We'll have to see what happens. Um, like you said, it's going to be one we have, probably have an easier time breaking down at six than we will today at, at this moment. Yep. All right. What do we got here for the next one for you? You got, is it Brooklyn, Toronto or Atlanta, Sacramento? Yes. Yes. Brooklyn, I have a Brooklyn, Toronto. Okay. So uh, Ben Simmons looks good. Um, uh, going back to Philly last night, had a big game, could have had a bigger game if he got any fourth quarter run. Um, I, I, I don't, for whatever reason feel as into playing him tonight, even though they got the price drop, but he's definitely on my list. Um, I liked him going back to Philly. I liked everything with it. I thought he played, I thought he's looked just good in general. Like he has, he has, he's looked a lot more, a lot more fluid, a lot more himself, you know, who cares whether he can shoot or not, if he's going to get 11 assists and seven rebounds and he gets three steals and three blocks like he does. That's, that's all in his, in his game. Um, The problem is you got a team that doesn't turn the ball over, make a ton of mistakes against him. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of Ben Simmons is the one who projects the best. I think he's going to probably be a little bit over owned tonight. I'm very curious to see whether guys like Curry play on the back to back. In fact, any of these guys are all in danger of not playing on a back to back. The problem is they need to win games. So um, I just have Brooklyn as a question mark a little bit, but I, I, I don't think I really want much outside of the obvious play in Simmons. And I just think that these guys are a little too cheap on the other side. Like, I think Fred Van Vliet is a really good play at 7,800. Um, it's, it's almost like we, for like this time goes by and you sort of forget what, 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 what he's playing with out here. But Fred Van Vliet had a terrible, he was four of 18 and seven for 21, his last two games. None of that is enough to make me not think he's a good play at 7,800. Um, I don't care that he, that he has a couple of bad shooting nights and you're still playing down Siakam. I mean, everybody remembers that, right? Yeah. Thaddeus Young at 5,500 is a crazy price, but he's he put 42 in the last game. <laughs> like, it's possible. Um, for me, mostly, I think this is going to be Fred Van Vliet and maybe mix in a little bit of OG and Scotty Barnes. Um, I think they're all fine. I like Van Vliet the best. I like Van Vliet the best as well from this game. Um, uh, um, I presume that there's no more issues with Kyrie, like go traveling to Toronto and stuff like that. I, I, I don't think that I don't think that exists anymore for him, but I yeah I, think, thing anymore. I don't think so. But well, I mean, again, it wouldn't surprise me if he sat it back to back, but I don't I don't think they really. No, but really there's no more like COVID protocols for. Not that I not that no not that I'm Toronto. Not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah. Um, but just so you know, there there is going to be a, maybe it's not like today or whatever, but you know, there's going to be a game where Kyrie goes off. I don't know exactly when that's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but 
and he's going to be two percent when that happens. Um, he's I, every every time I, I almost I almost feel like playing him, then I just kind of back off, whatever. But there's going to be a, there's going to be a time where it's the five six game slate that no one's paying attention that everybody's got you know sixty percent Durant or something like that. Where 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 well actually Durant can never be sixty percent on when Kyrie's on the court, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I was thinking about, about playing Kyrie in general, and, and probably, but probably not today. Um, I like uh, Van Vliet, and I don't think I'm going to go back to Simmons tonight. It's a much bigger slate, um, and just other guys project better for me. So for me, it's going to be Van Vliet, though. Yeah, um, yeah, and and I, I I'm going to probably include a little bit of OG and Barnes in my mix as well, uh, just for my side of it. Um, next we got, uh, Atlanta, Sacramento. Do you want to start this one off? Cause Sacramento has been the best team in the NBA without a doubt lately. Um, they probably should be like 12 and what are they, whatever they are, they're nine and six. They should probably be 12 and three. They literally had weird calls at the end of three games. Um, uh, with all that said, it's a back-to-back. -back. It's hard to, it's hard to play the guys who were like Fox was blazing up and down the court with a big win last night and in. Memphis is a tough situation that they're in to go back to back Memphis and Atlanta, two of the faster teams around. Um, I, I have everybody sort of as okay on Sacramento. Um, I, I, I played Herder last night. It looked like it was going to be a great play until he went scoreless for the last 12 minutes or whatever. Um, he had 35 fantasy points though, going into the fourth, which felt really, really good to get different with him. He was like a 4% on a small slate, but it couldn't quite get there. And everybody on, I mean, this is a, an upgrade matchup just in terms of pace. Although Sacramento's defense has improved, um, so all the all, all the guys I would say are in Trey Young, Dante Murray, all in play. Nobody I'm excited about. And if DeAndre Hunter is out, I will consider taking another shot on AJ Griffin. Um, the guy who's projecting the best is John Collins. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting there. Um, I, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the fact that he never gets there. <laughs> so uh, a good game, but I, I don't know if I have anything to really prioritize from this one right now. Sheets, am I missing something? Yeah, I, I actually think Trey is the best play on the slate tonight. Um, uh, it's like you said, I mean, it's going to be a wicked fast, wicked fast page, wicked fast matchup. And uh and uh, I, I I really like him a lot actually. Um, he's going to be owned though. Uh, we have to. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's going to be owned. So that's the best. That's that's the. But what you can do, uh, you could play the one fourth owned uh, of that Dejounte Murray. Uh, I, I do think one of these guys is going to have a really really big game in this matchup. Uh, Sacramento, yeah, they've been playing better defensively, but yet, like you said, I mean, they still still race the ball up the freaking up and down the court a million miles an hour, and that's usually good for fantasy and and and. You know, uh, Dejounte Murray can get some good steals in that environment as well. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I haven't played. I don't think I've played Atlanta like this whole season. Um, and they just haven't shown up. But, but uh, they're showing up today. And on the Sacramento side, I think it's hard to find the right guy. The guy I always seem to default to is is Sabonis, but ninety six hundred is is is, is rough, um, especially when you have. Uh, well, how many other good centers are there really? I mean, uh, you could play Cat at center, whatever. But like Sabonis, Fox, obviously. I mean, listen, it's going to be tough, like you said, to go back to back and run up and down the court a million miles an hour and be be efficient, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think Sacramento. Listen, Sacramento, I think is what, what's the spread in this game? Are you pick them or something, something like that, right? It's uh, five points for Atlanta, which is kind of amazing. Oh. Kings okay. have been playing, but it's the second of a back-to-back, -back, so it makes sense. Right? Yeah, they always, they always adjust for that. So I don't know. I, I like I like both sides of that. Uh, I, I like I like both guards in the Atlanta. I wouldn't play them together, and I'm having trouble finding a run back. So that's where I am. Yeah, it's and and I feel like somebody from from the Kings is going to be a good play tonight, and maybe maybe somebody sits out. You never know. Uh, the guy who won't sit out is you. If you for for you revenge narrative fans out there is uh, Kevin Herter is going back to Atlanta, and he is. Uh, he's been playing really well, he's, but I don't think I'm going to like, I have a bunch of those guys and um, in my order of ranking, if I had to play them would be another guy who's played really well. And Harrison Barnes, who's just consistently putting up over 30 and he's 5,300. If we're going to talk about guys like shake Milton, I think that this is like, 
you know, Barnes go, goes through these stretches where he plays really well for periods and uh, doesn't feel all that exciting, but he's 5,300. And I mean, his projection for, to give an idea, like of why I think that, why I kind of like him, his projection is like 27 fantasy points and 25 for you. He's scoring 35 basically more often than he's getting 25. So I, I'm yeah. open to, to Harrison Barnes in this environment. I'm also open to Keegan Murray, but it doesn't feel great. It just, I, I would need some bodies out to really, I think, make any, make any decisions on the uh, Sacramento side. I mean, we should just mention that De'Aaron Fox, I mean, he put up, what do you have? 69 last 61 last night. Um, it's a good, I, I would love to play him here. I, I just, back to back from my from Memphis to Atlanta. It just is, it feels like a lot to ask. Um, so that's my hesitancy with, uh, with De'Aaron Fox and you need the games to stay close because he goes nuts in the fourth quarter, every, every game. You know, as we, as we talk, as we transition to Denver OKC, if, if I should really go back to saying what I mean, in other words, when, when I talk about who the best plays on the slate are. Um, so I do think Trey is the best play. Um, but that's that doesn't factor in ownership. Um, I think who might be the best play actually is Shea. Um, he, I have him, you know, a little bit below Trey, whatever. But I have him at five percent ownership. Um, you, you you could sign me up for that. Um, so so I, I actually do prefer Shea to Trey. If if you if you factor in ownership, I believe um, I, I like him a lot in this spot. Um, not in the spot. I mean, whatever Denver's, whatever. But I just yeah. like like in the context of the slate and how owned other other guys are going to be. I'll go right back to him. He kind of I don't know if disappointed. I mean, he was fine in his last game against the Knicks. People were expecting probably a little bit better. Um, but I'll go right back to him. And then um, I don't listen. Jokic is a is a better price, obviously, than Luca or Giannis. Um, Still something about eleven six on on a, on a million game slate that kind of kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit, but like I said, if he's if he's not going to be owned, I still have him being owned. I mean, I have him like double digits. Um, but if you want to play him with uh, with Shea, for example, I mean, it's kind of tough to do if you want to know the truth. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's what I like. I, I do I do like Jokic and I do like Shea and. Uh, let me see if I can get to Giddy today because I always want to get to Giddy if I can. Um, I'm not really getting to him today, but he's always got a ceiling. Uh, Earl, again, marginal value. Uh, I don't know, may maybe, maybe Giddy. I'm, I'm staring at him. So, I'm okay, let, let me let me change what I said. I like Shea and Giddy and then also Jokic. Yeah, I'm interested in your numbers are getting a lot, a lot more ownership on the Denver side than I would have imagined here. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm having a hard time getting to anything from Denver, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. Feels like a good Michael, tr Michael uh, Porter Jr. Troll game. Yeah. I also like uh, Giddy. I, I actually like Giddy a lot. He's the, the guy I prefer between he and Shea. And I think they're both good plays. Um, hold on one second here. I'm going to pause this real quick. But anyway, so, so just to finish up my thoughts on this one, I, I do think Giddy, uh, one of Giddy or Shea, I think is very reasonable. And that is something I'm going to, at first glance, prioritize. They're going to need size in this game uh, just because of Jokic. And maybe it's a not it's not the worst time to go back to to Robinson Earl because they, like, are they going to put Baisley on him? I mean, what, what are they going to do? Like, Robinson Earl is 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 a guy who's, like, not, not a guy I love to play because of how they rotate their front court. But against Jokic, you're going to need some size. So maybe he gets in foul trouble and then it turns into Baisley or something, but it just feels like if there was a game where I would want to play these guys, this would be it. Cause there's really no bigs, you know, there's no Poku there. There's no, uh, what's his name? No, uh, the other big guy they were playing early in the season. They do have Baisley back, but I, I, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm interested a little bit in Robinson Earl as an early value play that probably goes by the wayside later today. Did you have anything else from this one or let's, we should move on. No. Right? Yeah. Nope. All right. So let's talk about uh, um, what's the next one you got here? Sorry. So Milwaukee against Chicago. So Giannis has not put up a fantasy point production pretty much all season. Um, well, I, he did I, at the beginning I, of the year. I'm exaggerating, right? Was, yeah, yeah. When, I, when I say the season, it's the uh, season of the of 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 the of this game walk. <laughs> um, all the way at the beginning, he put up a couple, but he has you know hasn't been uh, 
like th this one, 37 real life points, only got him 58 fantasy points. You know, it's, it's hard. Listen, it's hard. It's hard to put up 70. It's just, it's hard, you know, like yeah. gotta, um, so I'm, I'm going to be off of him today, especially on a big slate like this. Um, he'll be low on, but I still see him double digit on for some reason, but uh, I can't do that. I don't, I, Levine looks like a reasonable enough play at 7,100, but projection wise, I'm not really getting there. I got, I have basically this game is kind of a cross off. Yeah, it's a, it should be a pretty decent game environment. I, I'm, I'm good with taking a shot on Levine, but it's, again, this is just early look. So he's not a priority of any, by any means of me. Like, do we want to play Levine or Giddy in general? I think the answer is almost always Giddy just because of the usage. And Levine hasn't really, has, has somewhat, there's there's a lot of trade rumors and uh, that maybe he's fallen out of favor a little bit in Chicago um, and that they're talking about possibly blowing things up. Uh, Vucevic has had some really big games against in the past against, uh, 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 excuse me, against uh, Milwaukee. I don't know that how excited I feel about Vucevic. I, I don't know, man. I feel like everybody, I could, I could make a case for everybody sort of like the everyday with the bulls, I guess, but uh, nobody who really is, you know, glaring at me that I need to play. So one of the big three from Chicago and Giannis is in play always, but I don't feel like any of that's a priority for me. And I would go Levine, then, uh, then Vooch. Actually, Vooch and Levine are really close. And then, uh, DeRozan right after they're all at a price at price points where they could smash. It's just really hard to pick which one it's going to be on a given night. So. Uh, I will usually side with the three point shooting because that's the one thing I am, you know, you can get shots off against Milwaukee and Levine is the best shooter on their team. So that's all I really have. Um, I'm going to throw out a, a really weird one. Um, I owed a son I know he hasn't had like the, the production lately, but the minutes are there and in a, in a good pace game, it just as a long shot, large field thing, just maybe through include him. I don't think you want to, you, you want to play him in like as a priority, but I don't mind a Sonmu at uh, 4,100. All right. Um, New Orleans, San Antonio. Is that what you got next, Sheets? Yeah, I got that as a pass. Uh, you got anything from that game? So, I mean, early on, Herb Jones, I guess. But that's not going to be a play we're going to want to make by the time it's all said and done. Larry Nance, I, I can't – I don't know. Maybe I'm at, Maybe I have an issue, but – I'm having a hard time ignoring the price on both sides for, for Joe Val. I know the minutes have been cut. I know they've been playing more small. Um, you do have a natural matchup with him against, against Podal. And I, I I'm just, I, I I'll tell you this. I, I'm just going to put Val and Tunis as I'm, I'm definitely not crossing this guy off. Um, he's just too cheap. And, and I understand that the trends are not going his direction, there's no reason why tonight couldn't be the 2020 game he puts up. Like he's, he's got the ability to, and they don't necessarily need to keep going small every game. They, they've got a lot of flexibility with their roster, just a really good all around team. But Joe Val at, at 5,600 on FanDuel and, and 26 and I'm sorry, 6k on, on, on DraftKings just has me like a little bit, a little bit interested. Um, even though, again, I see all the trends going in the wrong direction. Uh, there's a lot of guys who are, showing up good point per dollar plays for, for San Antonio, but nobody who's particularly exciting. Um, I will re always reiterate that, that Jeremy Sohan is going to be a good basketball player and going to put up some really big games at some point. I don't think we're quite there yet. And I think Trey Jones is, is fine. Um, everybody's fine to me. I just don't have anybody that I really love. So I'm probably going to stay away from San Antonio. Um, I, only, I guess, I guess that means in a very long version that my, my only real play right now in this game is uh the aforementioned Joe Val. Yeah. Um all right, these last two games are pretty good actually. This is where as, you get it, right? Yeah, as far as what I'm looking at. So for, first of all, Detroit Utah. I mean this Utah team is no joke, man. They 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 put up fantasy points, you know, and yeah. And Lowry Markinen, I mean, you know, God love him. You know, it's like it's funny, like these 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 guys like kind of like go here and there and in different systems, different whatever and and you knew you had talent coming out of college, right? And then just then he gets in the situation in Utah somehow where there's no pressure. They think they're tanking, right? To begin, mm -hmm. begin the season. And the next thing you know, they're like the fun, most fun team in basketball to watch. You Absolutely. Know? And, and it's not like they're like one of those joke teams that's fun to watch and they lose every game. You know, they're they're fun team to watch and they win every game. It's, no, it's they're, uh, they're they're playing the joke team that, that loses every that's fun that loses every game. 
What's that? Detroit, the, Detroit is the team that that's fun and loses every game. It's funny. Yeah, I know it's funny because Utah Utah is like the opposite of what Detroit is, but it should it was supposed to be more the opposite way around this year. I was just throwing that out there because they're playing Detroit. Sorry. Yeah. So I like. Uh... Uh, so, so Sexton did in fact get the start over THT um, in the last game and he played minutes. He just didn't quite do anything, but I go back to him at 4,400. Kelly O is always seems to be a good play at 5,200 Clarkson at 6,900. And then uh, why not play Larry Merkin every day? I, I can't, nobody can, can convince me of why that's not a good idea. I um, mean, literally gets there every day. Um, uh, on the Detroit side, it's weird. Like right now, I'm not getting too much. But again, with, with Cunningham out in this matchup, it would be pretty fast. I mean, you got. I think you got to play somebody. You know. So, so I don't know. Ivy. I tried some Burks yesterday. He did okay. Bogdanovich. They're not projecting all that great right now. But I have a feeling I'm going to end up doing some doing some business on the Detroit side. I'm not sure. But but definitely Colin Sexton, Olenek. Clarkson and uh, you know, and Lowry from Utah. Yeah, I'm having trouble getting to the Detroit side myself, but I, I certainly wouldn't mind anything. And also keep in mind that you definitely could see um, some guys sitting. I would say Alec Burks off the injury, but going back to Utah, the place where he played the longest and he's been good lately. I mean, he's put up, he's five X and then he put up 35 the other day against the, the Lakers. He only played 20 minutes last night in the win maybe Alec Burks is a guy we should be considering a little bit as a run back because I, I like Sexton. I like Olenek. Um, and I like, I like the speculate. I like the speculating on a couple guys, uh, THT and uh, Malik Beasley. I think there, I think there's enough upside where one of those guys gets there. Um, but I, I, you know, it's it's hard to guess which one. I, I think Sexton is the one you you sort of marry yourself to at the beginning of the day, but he's also going to be the highest owned by a lot. But I think mixing in a little bit of THT and Beasley is probably the right thing at this point before we get other ridiculous value that opens. But I'd like to try to get more guys in these games just because it allows me to delay. And I do think that you're going to see some weird late scratches. There's a number of teams on back-to-backs. We see this before Thanksgiving all the time where guys end up having to, guys end up sitting. So everybody, as always with Utah, like literally like what, seven guys are projected to five X or more. That means what happens is like three, two or three of them, probably like seven X, you know what I mean? And, and my, my, for my money, it's Sexton, Olenek, then THT in terms of likelihood of that happening. But you could always take a shot with Clarkson at 6,900. It just feels like a little bit, a little bit more than you want to spend. Um, but without Conley, it certainly, he certainly could get there. It's just very, very scoring reliant. Um, but yeah, so I've got THT as my priority here, but, um, I, re- I would like to find a Detroit run back other than Burks, but Burks right now is, does it, I think Burks is reasonable going back to Utah and also like, you know, they're, they're, they're using him a lot in th- to, to close games. It's just, I'd like to see a few more minutes if I'm going to spend 5k for somebody. Yeah. I must have this golden state wrong game wrong because I, I have, I was doing everything under the presumption that Curry's out. Is he playing? Um, I yeah, have I curry. So. I have curry is in. Yeah, so I gotta redo all this. I, I still have like old Golden State stuff with like all their ownership. I still have like coming at like a hundred percent owned, and and all these other guys like a hundred percent owned. So I, I I gotta redo this. But um, the one guy on Golden State that I would let's mention that I'm getting right now is is gross is it? I is Jamichael Green? Is he a bad play? I don't know. Uh, somebody out or something like that? No. Um, Anyway, I'm getting to him for 30, 3,400 for some reason. And then, um, so again, I'll update the Golden State stuff. But uh, on the Clipper side, uh, you know, at, at least at least they're both out. You know what I mean? Like, they're not, like, questionable, game time decisions, minutes limits. You know, they're both out. So at least you could, like, project in some way. First guy I get is Terrence Mann. But Marcus Morris, Reggie Jackson, um Pretty much everybody, um, but but those are the guys that I like for, for now. Marcus Morris, Reggie Jackson, and um, what's his name? I guess Norman Powell would have to be in play, but Terrence Mann's the one that's showing up for me at 34. Yeah, it's pretty weird with the Clippers when you take off two Hall of Famers and it's really still hard to find the guys you know <laughs> to know who to play. 
Well, you know, um, I think I think the salary people. I mean, they 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 realize that these guys never play anymore. So it's like. <laughs> Well, the thing is, though, that somebody's going to have to do something. And, and and John Wall has been, like, incredible per minute, but they're just not giving him enough run. And he he and Jackson don't correlate well. I mean, he put up 30 in 22 minutes. He put up 40 the game before in 23 minutes. Just really high usage. Um, I don't know. Reggie Jackson played 38 minutes the other night, 36 minutes, and he put up 38 fantasy points. But it feels weird to rely on him here. He is the kind of guy who would take this matchup seriously. I think man, just because the value is where you'd start. And then you could also always gives you the flexibility of potentially if there's other value that opens up. Um, I think that Norman Powell, we've seen him bust so many times in these spots and um, yet I still have some interest in him. And so I think Norman Powell, I think that's my, my rankings is uh, man Powell, then Morris. Um, and, and, and look out for, for a sneaky Zubach play too. Like I, um, I think at 6,400, he could put up 40 in this spot. And and as of right now, the, as, as big as this slate is, we don't have a whole lot to be like super excited about. Um, so I, I, I would say that you trying to get some exposure to these late games until we have more information is probably a decent way to build. Um, I, I like clay. I, I, as, as I mentioned to you sheets, there's going to be the clay day. Unfortunately, I believe was that the 20th was that, was that on a weekend or something? I don't know for whatever reason, if I didn't have clay, when he, when he did his crazy 10, three pointer game um, and he scored 41 points the other night, uh, I think we're going to start seeing a little bit of a trend of that. They, they tried to get him going. I think, I, I think playing clay as a shooter at 6,100 is just always fun because he can put up, you know, 50 or he can put up 50 real life points. Um, so I have one of clay Wiggins, Curry, uh, or even considering Draymond with man, uh, probably man and pal is my favorite two on the other side, but I think this is a game you it would be better to be overweight on just if nothing else that it'll, it'll allow you to delay your lineups till we get news. If that, if that becomes a case, because right now I have like my, my priorities of the day. It's so like, it, it, it's really weird because I have Philly with, so one of at least one of Milton Harrell Reed in Philly. Um, as a priority, I have Sexton as a priority, or if you're not playing him, and even if you are, you could consider Olenek, THT, and Beasley with Burks on the other side. Um, Burks, not a priority, just a guy who I'm thinking about a run back. Uh, f- then you have the uh, the Clippers with Man, I think Man, Jackson, Morris, and Powell are all interesting. Um, Man is your value saving option. And then other than that, it's pretty normal plays, not guys who are like, oh, somebody's out, so we have to play these guys. But uh, I like Simons or Nurk, one of those two. At least one of Fred Van Vliet, OG, or Scotty Barnes, and one of Gideon Shea. And that's my early look of favorites, which is not that oh. much. And we're trying to make it – oh, and then uh, Bam, the, the, the Miami situation is just like a big circle with a question mark for me. <laughs> like what happens in Miami? Because if, if, if Hero's out again, I'll go back to Bam and Lowry. We're going to talk, can we go back to Cleveland for uh, not Cleveland to Philly for a second? So, yeah. I guess first question. I mean, I'm kind of multiple, multiple, multi-part, multi-part question is: Do you think that they that they start Reed this time because he had a big game? Um, and I guess a subsection of that is: it, Does it matter? You know who they start in that spot? I mean, I think I think getting the Paul Reed, um, Montrez Harrell play right is probably going to be important. Um, what, what do you th- what do you think they're going to do? Do you think it matters? I mean, do you have a preference between those two right now? Uh, my preference is Harrell, um, okay. and I do think they start Harrell. And Paul Reed also played 31 minutes on a back to back. He played his I don't that might be a career high. So to assume that he's going to play similar right. minutes on a back to back on the road feels right. with travel feels like a little bit more. And then Harrell, did, the one good thing the good thing about him is he only played 15 minutes. Um, right. And and maybe he get maybe he gets the extra. And not to mention it's his former team and a team that doesn't guard bigs, you know, and and gives up tons of offensive rebounds and things like that against guys he's played with before, um, where he got yeah. no respect, sort of. So I and and Harold is a guy like I mean, talk about guys who are narrative. He could get thrown out of the game. That that's certainly on the table. But he's a guy who will go out there and and try to cut your head off if he feels like you did anything wrong. Like I don't even need to bring up the incident with Giannis and uh, the shooting free throws after the game. He's just a. Uh, he's just kind Wait, of. Wait, I don't. I don't know what that is. What is that? He still. He still. Giannis was taking shots because they they lost the game and, the, and Giannis had missed like he was like four for thirteen from the line. So he's taking free throws after the game and Harold came out and made him take the take the, took the ball from him because it was in Philly, 
it was just really weird. And then, That's then, really then, funny. then Harold went and shot free throws. Then they moved this this ladder to fix something on the other side. And Giannis moved the ended up throwing the ladder, knocking the ladder over because he was just trying to shoot free throws. <laughs> it was like <laughs> that was really classless by uh by by the guy who I like tonight at Harold, but it was pretty funny that Giannis, yeah, and Giannis was a great sport about it. It was pretty, pretty good for him. Um, but it should be a fun slate. Sheets, I'm assuming that you'll be good for live today with me. I will be. I will be awesome. Well, let's make some money today, guys. It's going to be a wild one. We're going to hear news throughout the day. It's going to affect everything, but we will have you covered. And uh, I'm going to definitely try and get out of here by 630, though, after after our six o'clock show, just because I need to I know I'm going to have to need to build. I know we're going to hear some weird late news that's going to have me all over the place. But I will get my plays up on TrueDFS.com and I will get all of my early builds, my core plays. I also would uh, would like you guys to please, if you don't mind, giving a like to the video and subscribing if you don't already. Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, but hang in there after you stop the yep. re uh... All right. Good luck, everybody.